What are we starting with this week? That's staying in. No, what are we starting not. with this week? Um, a a we review. review. No, we're no. starting with a little thanks to our patrons. I know we did it last week, but let's we do it We did it again. last week. I know we did it last <gasps> week. We're doing it again. Sir, you cannot do this. I, can... I try to keep track of what we're doing so I can be right. And you can't just throw curveballs at me like this. I'm throwing a curveball. And the reason I'm throwing a curveball is because this episode that we're about to listen to and do, well, we're not listening to it. People are about to listen to it. This episode was suggested by a patron. Oh, uh, yeah. that makes sense. So before we get yeah. into the show, I do want to just ask everyone that's listening, do you believe in reincarnation? Let us know in the comments. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we start I've the not, show? I've not considered it. Yeah, let's start <laughs> no, the Dan, show. Every week we do this. We don't answer the question. <laughs> I answer it anyway. No. <laughs> I never listen. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Gutford. Hello there. This week, we're talking about past lives. Ooh, Ooh. hence the reincarnation. Yeah. What were you in a past life? Happier. <laughs> and based on the fact that you don't believe in past lives that's really funny <laughs> how telling <laughs> non-existence the mwah, sweetest kind of existence so this episode was suggested by a patron as I said Finn TZ uh, you can join our Boaty McBoatface tier on Patreon if you want to suggest an episode topic that we have to do we have to do it you can make any topic and we'll do it yeah believe me we have to do it. Corey would not have chosen this episode. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want proof that we have to do it, this episode is the proof. That's but not true. I'm very happy and excited about your suggestion. So whoa, whoa, okay, hold on. Let's <laughs> right. I'm going to reclaim this narrative. No, the reason that I said, "Oh man, this is a tough one," is because trying to find science on past lives is very difficult. Limited. Because scientists just mm. won't touch it because they don't want to. Yeah. Well, they weren't scientists in their past lives, so they have no one to talk to. That's true. All right, let's just start this. I'm going to be taking most of this from a 2008 review and a 2021 review. Um, a review being a science paper that talks about other science papers. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I'm going to be taking most of the information from that with some more specific papers thrown in here and there. Um, now, I don't think that past lives are necessarily true. I don't know, and I can't prove that they are, but... The burden of proof is... Okay, so the burden of proof is not on me to prove that they're not true. The burden of proof is on whoever is saying our ah, past lives exist to prove that they exist, right? Beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes. Yeah? Sure. I could make an opposite argument, but sure. Also, here, here's the thing. We don't have any evidence for past lives. And if you're going to make that claim, you need to have the evidence to back that claim up, right? Um, and, and one thing I want to point out now is Occam's Razor. So people often misquote Occam's Razor as saying the simplest explanation is most likely to be true. If that were the case, then creation is a much simpler, you know, I, it's a much simpler explanation than evolution, right? Mm -hmm. Someone just made everything rather than, oh, something's evolved complexly over a period of blah, it's too much. <laughs> it's too complex. No, no, no. Simplest explanation is explanation is true. That's not Occam's razor. Occam's razor actually states something more along the lines of the the idea that requires the fewest assumptions, right? Yeah. So Right. Evolution requires fairly, like, relatively far fewer assumptions than creationism. Creationism um, requires the assumption that there is a god. You know, well, first mm. off, you need to assume that a god can exist. Then you need to assume that there is a god. Then you need to assume that a god would want to create stuff, and then the god could create stuff. All of that to explain this. Whereas evolution is built on much fewer assumptions, um, and it can be proven through evidence and is predictable. Right? Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, great. Um, and so, if we look at recent data, apparently um, uh, quite a lot of people in the world believe in the uh, believe in the afterlife. So, Mexicans, there's 76% of Mexicans believe in the after afterlife, 73% wow. uh, of South Africans, 72% uh, of Canadians, 65% of Indians, 98% of Iranians, jeez, 51% um, of the of Japanese people, um, and that includes 46 to 60% of those with no orig uh, religious affiliations believe in some kind of afterlife. Wow, that is a lot more than I was expecting. Right? I'll yeah. Be but then, um, but um, apparently, the people haven't. We've not looked into what correlates to these beliefs in the afterlife. Whether there's some relation with mental health or quality of life that you know relates to how 
uh, how likely people are to believe in the afterlife. But yeah, no, it is interesting that um, people with no religion um, or affiliation to a specific religion will believe in the afterlife. Obviously, mm. it could be spiritual and believe in reincarnation or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, so um, to start off, I, I mentioned that I would be looking at two different reviews, one from 2008 and one from 2021. This 2021 review, um, so it's pretty interesting. I'm just going to start off with the numbers of sort of papers that they've got on past lives, uh, past lives um, that they looked at. So um, they only included papers that were published in academic journals um, in the major mainstream scientific databases. So that's all the stuff that I sort of use. So, so Scopus, Web of Science, PubMed, um, a few other ones, okay? Um, and they only included observational studies, uh, case reports, case controls, cross-sectional and cohort um, of spontaneous alleged uh, past lives um, with no language or date limits. Um, so they excluded reviews, books, book chapters, and studies related to non-spontaneous memories. So essentially, they got rid of anything that was sort of um, induced or uh, induced by hypnosis or anything along those lines. Mm -hmm. Why? Be well, because if it's induced by hypnosis, it's okay. Kind of spoiling, but <laughs> if you induce it by hypnosis, there is another sort of let's say factor in there that could be resulting in a past in a, in a past life memory. Yeah, okay. If someone is hypnotizing you and then inducing a memory, they could just be implanting the memory for want of a better word. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if if it's spontaneous, then it's come from it, it you could it's more reliable that it's come from the person, right? Yeah, of course. But I mean, you could I mean, it would be a large task, but you could induce hypnosis in somebody, have some kind of past memory um is regressed, and then you check that, obviously it's very difficult to check that neither the hypnotizer nor the person who is being hypnotized could have had any reasonable access to that piece of information and then check if the information is correct and then form your conclusion. Now, obviously, that, though, there's a lot of steps in there that are very difficult. So that's Absolutely. entirely outside of the scope of this review. The review is just looking at sort of the numbers of papers and the sort of overall trends in, the, in those papers. Okay. And ultimately, induced mem the induced ones are very different than the spontaneous ones. Oh, okay. And e and even so, even if a memory was induced, um, we'll get to it. We'll get to it later. But ultimately, inducing is it it kind it kind of has to be separated from um spontaneous ones because there is another there is another person involved. There is another factor in, involved okay. there. Um, and interestingly, so a majority of the past life memory investigations were involved in uh it were performed in Asian countries. Uh, so that was fifty eight, and then North America. There were ten. Then two in Europe, one in Africa, and seven were um, across uh, multiple different places. So like sort of uh, multi territories. So like including diff like you know say North America and Europe and Asia, um, and yeah. So there was an increase um, in publications uh, per decade since um, the f this one of the major studies was published in the sort of 1960s. Um, and then between the 1990s to the 2010s, most of the papers that are published were published then. Um, that was 35. Um, and there's been a slight decrease in the past 10 years. Um, there's only been 50 in the past 10 years. Yeah. Um, so that is that gives you, give, gives you sort of idea of how many of these studies there are and where they're kind of taking place. I want to tell you now about the Division of Perceptual Studies at the University of Virginia. Have you heard of it at all? No. Nope. Virginia? Never heard of Virginia? I've heard of Virginia. Heard of Virginia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. There's this. The <laughs> Division of Perceptual there. Studies. Yes. So is this to do with like consciousness and perception? Well, so it used to be called uh, something slightly different. It used to be, um, oh gosh, where is it? Uh, parapsychology is what it used oh. to be called. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of a conscious, it, it's mostly pseudoscience sort of stuff. Right. Oh, As in, but it's at a university. Yeah. So when I say mostly pseudoscience sort of stuff, I mean, it's it mostly studies what is often believed to be pseudoscience as in past life past mm -hmm. life science, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, and the paranormal, really, more than pseudoscience. Interesting yeah. that that's got its own division to the university. That's really yeah. interesting. Well, there's a little story behind it. So um, there was a man named Dr. Ian Stevenson, who uh, we could even do an entire episode on, to be honest. Uh, but to cut a long story short, he did some work um, on past life uh, past life sort of studies. And he was, he, was uh, he did this sort of, I think, later in his life. He started off um, doing uh, biochemistry, then he trained in psychiatry and psychoanalysis, um, and then he was named the chairman of the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Virginia in 1957 when he was in his 30s, um, which uh, was, you know, quite a, quite a big moment. Mm. Um, and he then sort of, the, the sort of 
scope of his study started to change. It started to shift more towards the sort of paranormal. Um, and there came a point where he he basically opened um, the he opened a sort of new department. So he stepped down from as the sort of head of the of the um, of the department that he was in, and kind of opened a department within that department, which was studying sort of more paranormal stuff, past mm-hmm. lives, things like that. Um, and actually, um, the the physicist who invented um, the you know the photocopier. Xerox. Yeah, Xerox. Yeah. yeah. Um, so his name was Chester Carlson. He was really in, interested in what uh, Ian Stevenson was doing. So he actually uh, started funding a lot of a lot of his work. Um, and when he died, he left him a million dollars. He left a million dollars to the University of Virginia to fund Ian Stevenson's research. And so, uh, yeah, Ian Stevenson basically used that money to travel around the globe, track down people that had um, reports of uh, past lives, mostly children, by the way. Yeah. Um, and so he, yeah, he opened the division of um, the division of parapsychology at the University of Virginia, um, which was forced onto him. Apparently, um, he didn't want that name, but it was it was forced onto him. Uh, it was then changed uh, to uh, the division of perceptual studies. I think there was another name. In, in the middle. Oh, yeah. There was uh, the Division of Personality Studies. And then it changed to the Division of Perceptual Studies after that. Um, and Ian Stevenson, um, he died in 2007. But uh, I think the head of uh, the Division of uh, Perceptual Studies now is a man named Jim Tucker, Jim B. Tucker, who's done a lot of the sort of studies that you see recently on past lives. And yeah, so we're going to look, uh, the other review that I was talking about, as I said, there was a review from 2008, that was done by Jim Tucker. So that was a review of the work up until that point um, on past lives. Um, and like I said, he worked at the University of Virginia, he's published a lot of papers on past lives, and um, he has been the director of the Division of Perceptual Studies for the past 20 years or so. Uh, yeah, but past 20 years or so. Um, and apparently he has a, deba- a database full of past lives accounts of past lives memories um he's got 2200 um cases in that database uh, last he checked apparently and he said this is a quote from him a lot of it to be perfectly honest is trying to figure out the answers for myself hopefully my work or my writings have had a positive impact on some people but they're still trying to answer the question of what is the level of evidence that in fact there is a part of us that survives after the body dies so the thing is the subjects in most of these cases uh, tend to be small children or young children mm-hmm. actually uh when this was suggested uh, it was specifically highlighted, you know, the past past life memories um, involving children. Um, and apparently over 2,500 cases have been um, investigated worldwide. And the, like I said, they happen all over the world, but they're easiest to find in cultures that believe in reincarnation for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, there have been a lot of, in a lot of cases in the West. Um, usually these will start, these will start, uh, these will come on at 35 months, the age of 35 months, which is about just under three years old. Um, and, they will usually last until the age of about six or seven, and then the kids will just kind of stop talking about it and forget it, which is oh. actually the same age that you sort of start forgetting your childhood, and you mm. could usually oh. remember stuff from the age of sort of six and seven and up, but you can't really remember from before that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they will usually make they will usually make uh, spontaneous statements. They'll describe the lives of people that um that are fairly recent. Usually, they've died uh about sixteen months before the child was born. Um, that's sort of the, so freaky. So the average is about six months before the child is born. Um, but we'll get to why that's. We're, we're, I'm presenting this as factual, okay, for the purposes of this discussion, okay. We'll get to that. We'll get yeah. to it in a bit. Um, they describe ordinary lives, usually in the same country. Um, at the one part of the life, this is this is just a direct quote. Um, from. <laughs> from the review. The one part of the life that is also often out of the ordinary is the mode of death, as 70% of deaths are by unnatural means. Um, Yeah. So, um, we're just going to go through the review because there's a bunch of different, there's a bunch of different interesting things they bring up, which is kind of necessary to build a base on what people, what the people studying this have, like think about this topic, right? Um, So, essentially, uh, he's, they start off by talking about um, even Ian Stevenson, the person that we were just speaking about, um, and a bunch, of, a bunch of the different sort of studies that he did. Um, and apparently he took an analytical approach to these cases and started uh, sort of um, investigating, writing writing things down, checking them against um, actual facts. Um, so some subjects reported um, having uh, been deceased family members, whereas other people said that they were strangers somewhere, 
somewhere entirely different. Um, and <laughs> it, this is another quote from this review. It says, if they give enough details, such as the name of that location, then people have often gone there and identified a deceased individual, the previous personality, whose life appears to match the statements the child made. Oh, I, this, I really want to ask you guys a question, but okay. I have it later. Okay, the question is coming up Fine. later, but I keep on wanting to ask you now. But you know, I'll ask you after the end of every section. What What do you think the explanation for this is? What would you What would What is the simplest explanation for this? Do you guys think, or the, the explanation that requires the fewest assumptions? The kids have read this somewhere. They've read about like a newspaper article, or they've heard family members talk about other family oh, members. Maybe. It's kids. It, so before they can read, so three years old. I was thinking maybe the explanations the kids were giving were so broad or vague that they could just apply it to somebody, anybody in a graveyard. Like that's, there's got to be somebody yeah. local who's died recently who fits that description. Yeah. So, so you, little you, fortune tellers. Yeah. Have you heard of cold reading? <laughs> yeah. 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 So cold reading is uh, what douchebags do. Um, <laughs> I saw that fly land mm. on my glasses. So cold <laughs> reading. Yeah. It's what douchebags do. Um, essentially they will exploit people whose family members have died mm. and make them think that they can contact their family members by doing this very easy to, I mean, Fairly easy to learn sort of process, right? You throw out sort of, simply put, you throw out a vague sort of question to the audience, like, mm -hmm. oh, does any, has anyone here lost someone? Um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a sort of, uh, a sort of feminine presence. And then they'll all put their hands up. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've lost someone. It's like, I'm feeling a sort of, um, a Penelope. Is, 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 <laughs> a pen, is Penelope mean anything to anyone? Oh, my cat's name is Penelope. Oh, my name is Penelope. Oh, my mother's name was Penelope. Yeah. Right? You, you start off really vague and you let the other person give you more information until you can get more and more specific. And it's yeah. easier if there's a large group of people who are already, you know, sort of predisposed towards believing that you can contact the dead yeah. and are there because they want you to contact someone. And then you can say, okay, Penelope, your, your mother's Penelope. Okay, right. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that she, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that she died um, quite, you know, quite suddenly. It was, it was quite, it's quite, a, it's quite a, an untimely, unwanted death, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And she's telling me um, the money. Something about money. Something about money. Whenever people die, there's always money. There's always money issues, right? Yeah. So you, you start off vague and then let the other person give you more and more sort of information. And people will fill in the blanks for you. Kids can do this entirely unintentionally just by saying, I was a spaceman. No, that's a bit too, that's a bit, a too, bit too niche. I was a fireman and I died. They go, they go to another city. Why they find they a fireman that died. That? Because they're Why? kids. <laughs> what? Have you been around a five-year-old? No, not that's claimed to be a dead fireman. No, F they probably had a dream. Or, they probably had a dream or something. Five-year-olds say crazy stuff, yeah. man. Really? Yeah. It's just such a specific claim. No, yeah. I mean, if you heard kids, <laughs> like when kids, uh, the child doesn't even know about death yet. Citation child. No, yeah. <laughs> but kids do. Kids, kids don't understand death, but they'll say, "Oh, I died." Right. right? Like they, they don't understand yeah. the concept of death fully, but they understand that someone can die. But they don't understand necessarily that someone like so. Bear in mind, if you're like three to like between sort of ages of like sort of thirty five months, when it's sort of the average age of onset, kids don't really know that much. They don't really understand reality in the same way that we do. They're, mm. they're still picking up on it, so they can just say stuff, right? They they will just say stuff. Um, but speak your truth. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, if you listen to a child playing, that came out weird. I have younger siblings. If you listen to a child playing, they just say make stuff up. Right? Yeah. They just make stuff up all the time. And it just so happens that if, if a kid makes, like we don't say, oh, if a kid makes something up about um, being an amazing sort of chef that you're like, oh man, they they truly know that they are an amazing chef. <laughs> they know it. This 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 mud pie they have made. It is it is some inbuilt, ingrained knowledge of mud pie. No, we just, there's a kid playing. Yeah. But as soon as a kid says, oh, I'm your dad, because I, I, I died and I was your daddy. Like, they're like, you think, oh, wow, this is my dad reincarnated. I've never experienced a child say something quite that creepy. <laughs> <laughs> kids say, oh my God. I am your dead father. <laughs> there, are, there are so many reports of that. That's such a common thing. Really? Which is, well, because kids don't, kids understand what a, what a daddy is and what a mummy is. And they might know that like, oh, grand, granddad died before you were born. And they don't understand much, well, much else. They'll just yeah. say stuff. So... Moving on, we'll get back to we'll get back to explanations in a second. So there's a section in the review on birthmarks. So this is something that Stevenson really harped on. He was really this is he was like, okay, right. You can you can explain away kids knowing this and that. How can you explain this? Kids that say they died in a particular way, they can have birthmarks that match <gasps> the scars and the harm done to the people that they said they were. 
It's like, they, it's like they've been carried over from another life. So if someone was shot through the head, they have a birthmark on their head have they not where just, the gunshot wound was. Have they not just seen their own birthmark and like made up a story about it? I, yeah, literally. Maybe. I have a scar under my arm from a surgery when I was one and a half. Had no yeah. reason to remember it. I used to tell people that I was in a sword fight. <laughs> <laughs> and were you? I thought I genuinely, in your past life? I oh, genuinely <laughs> specifically remember being in a gladiator sword fight, and that's how I got the scar under my arm. Oh, wow. Corey, we should investigate fun. this. No, I Do you made it up. Remember the layout of ancient Rome? No, it was, it was more, it was more. Greek than Roman, really, but that's right. not the, that's, that's really not the interesting. point. Look, I was a child. Mm, yeah, well, that's, that's when you know. remember them, isn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> you would be right. I was a child. We should get you some hypnosis. a child gladiator <laughs> fighting another child, and the swords were like six feet long. I made this up. God, they were really cruel in ancient Greece, weren't they? <laughs> Making children fight. No. You know, now that you say it, actually, no, it definitely was Roman because they have the funny hats. Yeah. So you were you were right the first time. Funny hats. Roman. Yeah. Yeah, they're the only culture with funny hats. Not sure your past commander would like you calling them funny hats, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I had no commander, Luke. I was gladiator. Anyway, wow. um, so yeah, the birthmarks thing, you yeah, jump really very astute there. Thank you. Kids see birthmarks and they come up with an explanation for them, right? Like, oh, I was, I was. That, that's how I died. Sure. That is the first thing I think when I read <laughs> that. To me, is the absolute simplest explanation. The first yeah, thing yeah. That, I, that I think when I see that, yeah. and it, it, it does worry me that a that a man who spent his entire <laughs> life studying this um, didn't think to be like, maybe the kids made it up. Maybe they made it up based on their on their birthmarks, right? Yeah, right? it's like, kind of reverse causality. He's got the causality wrong there, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, right? Um, and if you go looking for someone that died in that specific way that a kid made up based on their birthmarks, of course you're going to find there'll, someone that died in that someone, specific way. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, he published, uh, so Stevenson published a, a lot of work, uh, He a 2,200 page um, sort of document that ha that had over 200 of, of 200 of those cases in it, um, as well as uh, 13, I think, um, Oh, as well as like a sort of shorter synopsis of that. Um, so here are some examples for you. We'll see what you think of those. Uh, there was a girl who was born with uh, malformed fingers who seemed to remember being a man whose fingers were cut off. And a boy who was born with stubs for fingers on his right hand who seemed to remember the life of a boy in another village who lost his fing the fingers of his right hand in a fodder chopping machine. And there's also a story about a boy from Thailand who apparently had two birthmarks that matched with eyewitness accounts of... Um, Sort of the, the the a gunshot wound of a teacher. So this this mm. little boy said, "Oh, I used to be a teacher, and I was shot in the head, um, and that's how I died. And it was I was in this town, and um, the teacher was shot in the head in that town. And the grandmother took the took the boy there, and mm. the boy led the grandmother to the parents' house. You know, the parent of the teacher. And yeah. It's like, oh, this, these are my parents or whatever. Now, there is not. I have told you basically all the details that are there about that Thai, that the, the the boy from Thailand. Um, I don't believe it because there are there are so few details there, right? It led them to the house. That's freaky. That is freaky. Right, but you're we're believing that. Yeah, right? of course. Right, if that is true, sure. That yeah, is that freaky. is that is freaky and interesting. I would wager that there is something that is not there is enough there is enough information there. There there are a lot of ways that this can be easily explained, and enough information there is left out that you could be like, okay, well that's just th 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 you're leaving the information out there. Like for example, yeah. you could very much lead lead the kid into into doing that, right? You can sort of prompt them into being like, oh, were you, you were shot in the head. You were a teacher. Were you from maybe like this town because you know that there's a teacher or you like you half remember that or the kid heard about a teacher being shot in the head a town mm -hmm. over and said that they were that teacher, right? Yeah, that is, yeah. that. all of this makes sense. Like kids listen. My brother would do this thing where he would um, bring up something you were talking about like three months ago yes. as though it was ju it had yes. just been mentioned and you're like, what are you talking about? He's like, you said that. I'm like, yes, three months ago. And you weren't <laughs> not to, we did not say it to you. Were you listening to our conversations and just store that? Storing them for later? Yeah, kids kids listen <laughs> when you don't think they're listening. And they yeah. remember stuff that you don't that think well. they should remember. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's freaky as Weird hell. Thing. Yeah, freaky. So, like, you know, sort of simpler explanation. Fewer assumptions there, right? That, um, that there is sort of confirmation bias that the sort of the, the child was sort of led into it unintentionally clever hands effect yeah yes we've spoken yeah, about yeah, that yeah. before yeah these are all things that we that we know can happen with people so it takes fewer assumptions to believe well it's probably that rather than be like okay now we need to come up with a framework for how reincarnation works 
and make the assumption that all of that is true it's when true, yeah. there's this other slightly more sort of likely one uh, to the other side. Um, yeah. So what what do you think about the what do you think about the girl with the malformed fingers and the boy with the malformed fingers who thought that they were uh, that they thought they had their fingers cut off in a past life? I feel like they were just curious about why they're different. <laughs> They just go, my hand's different from everyone else's. Why is that? And yeah. they just thought about stories. Yeah. That could make sense. Right? Yeah. Well, do you, yeah. Uh, you seem to disagree, Luke. No, I don't disagree. I just don't know. That's all it is. Yeah. I, I find it weird that this child knew what like a rotary saw was. Um, they, did, they didn't. They did Okay. They just knew that they're... Um, um, oh, maybe he did. Maybe he did. But the, the, the again, this it's in a village a town over. So a kid could not like, oh, I got my kid. And was that true? Yeah. Was that true that there, there was, a, was a kid? There was a boy, yeah. Right. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Um, no, it doesn't say whether it's true or not, sorry. Ah. But the thing is... That, that's the crucial information there. Yeah, no, actually, <laughs> actually, actually, it is. Um, and they went to the town and there weren't even any sores. No, but the thing is... <laughs> we don't believe a, in a common, A common item that a kid would know about because it exists in their town, yeah. right? Like, oh, I'm a, I was a boy and I was working and I got my fingers cut off. Oh, you mean you got your fingers cut off in a saw? Yeah. This, you know, like this type of saw, yeah, yeah. but well, like, sure. Or, or I, I was working and I got my fingers cut off, and you go to a town over and there was someone with their fingers cut off. Yeah. Well, yeah. If there's a, if there's a fucking saw that children are working with in a town, like, yeah, someone's yeah. gonna get their fingers cut off. Yeah, right. Of course. But I, or look, I don't necessarily believe in this, but I do find it very fun. Um, but also, <laughs> you're talking about like assumptions. <laughs> hey, it's good fun. It is quite fun. But you are talking about assumptions. But you are assuming like to make this make sense in a materialist plane you are going oh but perhaps this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened and that makes sense let's see you're mis you're misrepresenting is, this the assumptions that are being made so what i'm saying no, I, you, you, I know what you mean you're saying that those are phenomena we see in people we know them to be true we know confirmation bias yeah. etc et but you're assuming those things did happen in order to discount the possi a possibility which you don't believe in, which is fine, but that is, you are trying no. to reach the conclusion no. you want to come to. No, what is happening is there is limited information being given. Yeah. And the, the information is being limited in such a way to reach one conclusion. And I am saying, well, if we are to fill in the blanks with, of the information that is left out yeah. with the most likely, with the most likely thing. With a possible thing, yes. The most, yeah, the most yeah. likely. Possible and most likely. Yeah? Most likely in your opinion, yeah. <laughs> jump, jump in. Take. I have nothing to add. No, you got, come on. I just mean you're filling them in with what you call the most likely thing because you categorically don't believe it to be true. And no, that's I not, would, that's, you, I, you have, that's, I, I'm not saying that I don't believe in past lives. What I'm saying is. But you is, did say that earlier in the show. I'm, based on this evidence, I don't. Right. I, I'm not, I'm, I don't discount it. Yeah. But I think this evidence is, mostly bullshit um okay. that again yeah. in the same in the same sense that someone could say oh vaccines are unsafe because they give you autism and i would say no that's bullshit but if someone told me oh actually um this batch of vaccines has xyz i'd be like oh yeah no that makes sense right like i can believe i can disagree with the way that you got to a conclusion while still saying oh the conclusion is perfectly possible right i disagree with the route that this is taking because it's they have they have come up. We'll, we'll, you'll, you'll see it later on, right? But the neutral point here is not believing in um, reincarnation. Is my is my point? Yeah, no, no, I understand that. And so you need to, you need to like the fact that information is being left out. You need to like you can't you can either fill in the information as they are doing with the fantastical belief of reincarnation, yeah, or with the Which much more grounded and and objectively look much more likely. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh my god! <laughs> I agree that it's much more likely sure. in that we have no proof of 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 the magical belief of reincarnation. Sure, Jam, roll the tape, please. Can you just? Uh... No. <laughs> I believe I agree with you that it is much more likely if what we assume to be true, which is that we li live in a material based reality, is true. That's true. Yeah, and based on the assumption, the, the presuppositions of the scientific um, model of the world, mm -hmm. I agree that it's more likely. Assuming the scientific model of the world is correct, which is an assumption. Yeah, I'm, I'm not and, denying that. And so, and so, once when when operating within the world within that that sort of axiom, those set of axioms, then yes, the most likely outcome is that. Yes, right. But the the, the reason that we are the reason that we are making that assumption is because yeah. it requires the few assumptions to get to. Well, uh, it assumes it assumes quite a lot, but sure, it, it does. It yeah. does, but it. 
I mean, the point is the point is that it's reliable yeah. and predi- it's reliable and predictable. Whereas Absolutely. we'll we'll see later on, this is less so, right? It allows you to make predictions about the future. Yes. Yeah, exactly. The scientific. Yeah. yeah. So the, the reason that we the reason that we make the assumption about this about science is yeah. because, um, yeah, as Luke says, it allows us to make predictions about the future. Yeah, and the past. But um, yeah, that is why I'm going with this and not yeah. the other one. It's so difficult. I know. <laughs> hey, but this is exactly what you want me to be. No, I know you, don't, I know you don't like it, but this is exactly what... I, I don't believe you went into this uh, episode being like, I really hope Luke just doesn't make any comments here. I really hope he just sits and listens. I don't believe... You can you can feign all your frustration all you like, but I don't believe you went into this episode being like, I can't wait for Luke to just sit and accept everything. Look, and- just because I knew it was going to happen <laughs> and I thought I knew it would make better content, it doesn't mean that I'm not actually frustrated. <laughs> I contain multitudes. So... No, um... So that is that is, that is there um, with the uh, sort of... The sort of... Remembering injuries or you know, sort of birthmarks or um, it says birth defects here. I don't really think that's the best term. Birthmarks and things like that, right? That they could match the the supposed lives of of the of the children that they remember. Mm-hmm. So um, there's also a part that talks about the strength of memories and emotions. So I'm just going to read this because I find it interesting. Uh, some make their statements with detachment, but many show strong emotional involvement in their claims. Some cry and beg to be taken to what they say is their previous family. Others show intense anger, particularly towards killers, in cases which the previous personality was murdered. In general, the stronger the evidence for a con- connection to the previous life, the more emotion the child shows when talking about that life. Even when the children do show strong emotion, many of them show great intensity one moment, followed by ordinary play a few minutes later. Many seem to need to be in a certain frame of mind to access the memories, and although some are able to recall them on demand, others are not. This, to me, says the kids are kind of making it up sometimes, and some kids can feel very strongly about it, and then just not care about it. Yeah. To me, that says they're playing. I, there Again, there could be another explanation for it. There could be. It seems the most likely is that the kids are playing. Right? Yeah. I don't know what you think. I, I like the, what is it? The interesting part to me here is that the apparently the stronger the evidence for the connection to a previous life, the more emotion the child shows when talking about that life. The reason that I'm going to come up with other assumptions here, by the way, Luke, is not because I'm saying, oh, it's absolutely not true. I just know that when people hear something like this, it is very easy to think, oh, so the, sure. the, the it's it, it that means it must be true because the stronger the emotional connection, like the, the you know the, the the more the more evidence there is, and I'm just saying here's an alternate way of viewing it that seems. That, that could potentially be more likely. For example, stronger emotion related to it and more evidence related to it. If there's more evidence, it's probably spoken about more in the kid with the kid, and the kid starts to sort of internalize that memory as mm-hmm. being true mm-hmm. rather than just play. Because again, as we were talking about, kids at that age have aren't very good at discerning sort of reality from fiction. Could it be similar to like imaginary friends? Yeah. Where kids form emotional attachments to their imaginary friends that don't exist, but then people talk to the the kids about their imaginary friends as if the imaginary friend is real. Yeah. Yeah. Kind so of that situation. Is what you're saying, the stronger the evidence for um, the, so the stronger the supposed evidence for the past life, i.e. they found some person in the neighboring town who kind of matches the description. Mm-hmm. The parents are then going to have been more likely to ask the kids more often about mm-hmm. it, which is going to strengthen it. And so when the scientist comes along or when this guy comes along and questions them about it, that memory and that sort of, thing is going to be more hardwired into their brain so they're going to show stronger emotion yeah 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 and also um but this says generally and yeah. again it I, d- I don't there's no numbers here it's just yeah, yeah it's it'd just be interesting statement. to know if there was any information or if this person had gathered any information on whether the parent how frequently the parents report questioning the child about it yeah, I think it'd be interesting to go through. I do want to go through the history of this um, with Ian Stevenson's work. I, it's just outside the scope of this episode, but I, I would like to look at that because it, it does look interesting. And also, I do want to pick at it. When was this report done? This so this um, review was done in two thousand eight of the Ooh, previous work. Right. When's the previous work done? Sorry, from the sixties onwards. Okay, it's just frustratingly. It says yeah, the data is poor in terms of the collection of the data. It's like it doesn't Ooh. it doesn't go like. Um, right. Well, how could how how could, for example, um, the exp- explanation Corey has given? How could you um, make a rational explanation of this that doesn't require the magical belief? Right. Then let's gather data to test that hypothesis. Yeah. It doesn't seem to do that. It just yeah. goes here's a bunch of stuff that's got loads of holes. Have fun in sixty years from now, Corey. <laughs> you have you have right now in in that moment given more scrutiny to the ideas than 
many of the people that are studying this give in their scientific papers, which well, they're scientists, which is frustrating to me. Doing? Which is frustrating <laughs> to me because you can't just you if you're as a scientist, you can't yeah. just think, oh, my idea is true, so I need to I'm, my idea might be true, so I need to find things that corroborate with it. You yeah. need to actively try and disprove what you believe to be true. Yeah, physicists are very good at doing that all the time. Yeah. In fact, I feel like physicists are the ones that very much like sort of they they they're like oh maybe it's this oh wait no that's not it maybe it's this though no that's definitely not it because like it's because it's very it's it's I think it's much easier as a physicist to prove that you prove yourself wrong yeah than say oh yeah a psychologist or a even a biologist, biologist yeah or I mean chemist is maybe a little bit easier not as easy as physics oh, oh no no not but you need this biology. giant equipment to do as a physicist you need like yeah yeah true. billions of pounds I, I'm not saying that phys <laughs> physicists have it easier I'm just saying that. <laughs> Look, dealing with a particle that can't lie to you is much better than dealing with a person, okay? Mm. That's yeah. that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Because particles can't, well, neutrinos can, but that's that's different. Those bloody liars. They, they lied. They said they moved faster than light, but they didn't. <laughs> well, no, they didn't. I don't think the neutrinos <laughs> lied. <laughs> I know they didn't. I know <laughs> they didn't lie. <laughs> 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 Just hit him giggling on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, what is it? Um, dual slit experiment. Particles can lie. So True. Well, they can change their mind. They can't lie. They can just change their mind backwards through time. <laughs> Look, what is lying. that if not lying? That's not lying. That is lying <laughs> using time travel, okay? That's lying with extra steps. <laughs> not if you're a timeless particle, it's not. <laughs> no, you know what it is? It's gaslighting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was always this. <laughs> Very good. Thank Write you. a paper. So, so that's, uh, you, you said um, imaginary friends earlier, Jeff. That's really interesting yes. because we do have that coming up in a bit. Ooh. But um, just just first, before we get into that, um, I want to talk about likes and dislikes because this is another section from the from the review. Um, it's it, apparently some subjects, this is a quote, some subjects display likes and dislikes that are similar to those of a previous personality. For example, so it gives an example here um, of 24 cases of Burmese children who said that they were Japanese soldiers during World War II. And some of them complained about spicy Burmese food and asked for raw fish instead. And also, some subjects showed an unfortunate interest in addictive substances such as alcohol and tobacco if the previous personality consumed them, including one whose neighbor obliged the young boy's request for alcohol until his grandmother intervened. I have been around chill. I have multiple younger siblings. They ask yeah. for booze all the time. They want what it. What children are you spending time? I, I, I Scotland. have met mod. Yeah, I have a cousin who is a little Scottish child. If she never has had never it. said something weird like, I used to be a farmer, but my head got bitten no, off no, no, by my... a bull. Or like, I need to smoke some no, no. tobacco <laughs> or give me alcohol. If, you, if, you, if a kid sees someone, if a kid sees an adult drinking something, yeah. they say, I want it. The adult says, no, it's for adults. Okay. The kid says, I want, give it to me. I want the wine. Give it me some of the wine. Kids will just, just want that oh, stuff. If a kid sees someone smoking, <laughs> they're like, what is that? I want to do it too. Because kids yeah, just true. Also, kids struggling with spicy food isn't, yeah. isn't surprising. Right? Like, yeah. it's so strange. <laughs> These children didn't want spicy Burmese food, even though they're Burmese. So strange. They wanted some sushi. Well, I want some sushi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does that make me a Japanese well, in the past? We, we've already covered, Cory, that you did have a past life as a Roman, so... I don't know if they a had Japanese spicy Roman is, is it a Japanese? a Japanese Roman. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, is that what you remember? <laughs> yes, sure. That's really interesting. <laughs> and uh, apparently, children often engage in play. Another quote: um, uh, Children often engage in play that appears to connect to, to be connected to their past life reports, um, particularly play that involves the occupation of the previous personality. Again, to me, this says less. Kids are playing because they remember their past lives, and more kids say they were a fireman because they like playing that, firemen. That's definitely tenuous. Right? I was, I was a pilot in a past life. <laughs> no. Woo. <laughs> wow, it's because of your past life. <laughs> no, it's because you like being but a also, plane. <laughs> what's interesting to me is that you only remember one life over. Do you know what if you why wouldn't you remember oh, the yeah. memories of a past life? Yeah. You know, so too fake, too hazy. Too yeah. It's like a JPEG. Yeah. It's just like JPEG. JPEG yeah. Save the J right? same JPEG twenty times. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good JPEG anymore. But what if? No, that doesn't make sense. Because with the likes and dislikes, right? So if you're a little Burmese kid and you like raw fish because yeah. you used to be Japanese, yeah, which makes complete sense. Um, then if you were to then be reborn, would you not then like raw fish because you liked it in a past life? But you were Burmese, Ooh. so it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, would you suddenly develop a love for Burmese food as like? Reincarnation regret. Oh, is a reincarnation racist? Is that is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, I don't know, Corey. We'd have to. Uh, I mean, like, well, yeah. 
Mm. Maybe you were Japanese Roman because you were Japanese before you were Roman. <sighs> right. So you in cases your in which Japanese life in Rome. Okay. Wow. So this is interesting because they've done some work on um so Ian Stevenson also did some work on um gender identity disorder as it was called then, obviously gender dysphoria now. Um and there's also been some recent work on this. I didn't get I didn't have a chance to look through it fully, but one of the ideas is that um, can you guess how gender dysphoria and past lives can come into play? Are trans you, people oh. other genders in past lives? Sometimes, maybe. Wow. But, uh, but, 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 the cross-gender behavior may continue even into adulthood, but overall, most of the subjects go on to lead perfectly normal lives as, wow. as not trans people. That, that, was, that was implicit oh. there. Okay. Trans people don't live normal lives, as we know. Yes. This was from 2008. I shouldn't be too mean. It was from 2008. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, no. Uh, 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 there's an idea that apparently gender dysphoria can be caused by being whatever in a past life, mm. which why is, why, mm. why is trans race not a thing then? Right. You know, like, why do we not have, That's true. oh man, I, I feel like, I feel like a white man. I'm so, I used to be a racist white man and this is why I hate this disgusting black body I'm in. <laughs> right. Like, why is that not a thing? It might be. Is that where internalized racism comes Maybe. from? Maybe. There we go. Maybe. Sure. I've, we've cracked the case. We That's have. it. So when the memories leave, um, it's usually around about the age of six. They stop, six or seven, they stop um, making those statements. They And it's also the, the same time that they start going to school and they have more experiences. And they, and they get start, educated out them by the establishment. Yes. That's and they it. also start to forget their childhood. Um uh, but apparently it can be longer in cases in which the personality has been identified as contact between the two families appears to keep them going longer. Again, to me, that doesn't mean, oh, contact makes the memories grow stronger. It's just, if they're false memories, they're going to be, it's, they're going to be implanted more easily if you keep contact with the old family. Yeah. If you keep reinforcing yeah, you them. Yeah. Keep reinforcing them. Exactly. Um, if you want to know more about, more about false memories, um, we did an episode on um, the Berenstein Bears effect, which you should <gasps> listen to. Yeah, seventy-eight. Corey once told me a very interesting mm. thing about memory, which <laughs> blew my <laughs> flipping mind. Guys, it was on the Mandela effect. That was a, uh, that was a little joke for me. I'm sorry, I couldn't let it go. Please sorry, continue. I couldn't remember. Um, <laughs> so Corey once said this really interesting thing to me about memory, which blew my mind. So I was I had this experience where I was like meditating on the tube. And I came out of my meditation, and I had I had um, seen a countdown timer for the for my meditation countdown in my meditation, right? So I came out of my meditation, and I I was like, wow! For the ten seconds before my alarm went off, I saw this like ten, nine, and I was like looking at it. I was like, oh, that's my meditation timer. Bing! My meditation timer goes off, and I'm recounting this story to Corey, and that is what I remember. But of course, when I remember it, that's happening now. Right. And so, you know, my, I, I could swear that that's what I remember. And mm. very possibly in some weird, like pseudoscientific, metaphysical explanation for that, whatever, very possible. That's how it felt at the time, right? When I was recounting this to Corey. But then you can also, it could also be that my brain rewrote the previous 10 seconds before my timer went off. And I wouldn't know the difference mm. because everything mm. I'm remembering is an experience that is happening right now. It's not necessarily a reliable memory of the past and that's just so freaky mm. it's so freaky oh yeah it's horrible i hate it yeah you like literally it's like the um solipsistic world it's kind of solipsistic worldview but basically that you are a brain and that all that all that exists is the brain but the brain is being spontaneously created right now if you were spontaneously yeah. created right now with all your memories you would swear that those memories happened hmm. but they i could have just exist like blown True. into existence right now it's like, when you, know. it's like when you're in a video game, right? You're playing a video game. You walk around and if it's, if say it's a, a newer video game, right? The sort of Last of Us 2. Yeah. You walk into a new area. It feels like that area has always existed. Yeah. That area was generated yeah. when you walked into it. That's true. It, 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 that is, and you don't know the difference, right? Yeah. So long as the, so long as the lag isn't too much and so long as like, you know, it, it, it's running fast enough, you would not know that things are being loaded shortly before you see them. Yeah. And it could be like, it's the exact same thing as um, the sort of memory thing you're saying there. Have you had an experience where you are falling asleep, uh, you close your eyes and immediately open them and it's like eight hours later? Yeah. It, like in your head, it feels like 10 seconds. Oh yeah. Passed. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But That's you've right. had a full eight hours sleep. Yeah. 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 It's, it sounds kind of like that where your brain just rewrites and goes, yeah, you falling asleep. That happened like 10 seconds ago, right? Yeah. Kind of like that. So um, here's, here's reincarnation as an explanation is the, is the heading of this little, of this little section. It's a quote here from Stevenson, Ian Stevenson, who um, did a lot of the work on this. He said, reincarnation is the best, 
even though not the only explanation for the stronger cases we've investigated. Um, I disagree with that. He's a dead man. I can say what I want. Disagree with you. Yeah. Or maybe he's not anymore. Maybe he's been reincarnated. He's, he's somewhere. Yeah. Into someone that was born in like 2007. Now, I, I mean, look, I mean, we've been through this already, right? I just, I don't think that reincarnation is necessarily the best for the strongest cases. Um, so let's look at Ryan Hammonds, right? I'm just going to give you two case studies, then we can go and do some more stuff. There's some interesting stuff going on. Um, so Ryan Hammonds had nightmares at four years old about his heart exploding. Um, and he also thought that he was someone from Hollywood. Um, and there were some links between, you know, what he said and someone else. So um, there's, there's a man, there's a man um, we, we spoke about them, this guy. Um, Ian, is it Ian Tucker? No, not Ian Tucker. Jim Tucker? Jim Tucker. That's it. So Jim Tucker was looking into sort of different people with sort of past lives experiences. And Ryan Hammonds, a four-year-old, had this sort of past life memory. Um, he was like, you know, he would wake up in the middle of the night screaming about his heart exploding, all this sort of stuff. Um, and on looking into it, they found out that, um, you know, that, uh, that was a man named um, Martin, Marty Martin, who died in 1964. And actually, um, Ryan's mum uh, showed him a picture of this guy. And he was like, that was me. I remember the guy that he's standing with. And that, that's me right there. Um, and this was sort of, um, you know, before they knew who Marty Martin was. They sort of managed to track it down who he was after him seeing that picture and pointing it out and being like, that was me. And he also said um, that he lived somewhere um, with rock in the name. It was like rock or mount in the name. Mm. And Marty Martin lived on Roxbury Avenue. Oh. Ooh. ROX. Roxbury Avenue. Still. Yeah, still. Yeah, close. still, yeah. Um, so Ryan, um, Ryan sort of um, managed to pick out Martin's wife um, in a picture. Um, and he said that she looked familiar, but he wasn't sure how he knew her. Um, and then um, they flew to Los Angeles. Uh, Jim Tucker and, and um, Ryan flew to Los Angeles to meet Martin's daughter, um, who was eight years old when her dad died. Um, and Ryan apparently was confused to f find out that she'd grown. He was like, "What? You're so old. What? What has happened? I remember you being a little, little eight-year-old girl." Um, and Tucker started fact-checking some of Ryan's memories with Martin's daughter. Um, and this is a quote from the Vice article, which I think talks about Jim Tucker and talks about some of his work. Direct quote: "A lot of the details proved accurate. A lot of them did not. Some couldn't be verified. So some of the actually some of the things that proved to be accurate. So he said that he used to he was dancing on Broadway." which seemed unlikely because the guy was just an extra, but it turned out to be true. Uh, but wasn't. Um, he also said that he had two sisters and a mother with curly brown hair, which was true. Um, and he remembered his address, which I told you, um, having Rock or Mountain in the name, um, Roxbury. Now, um, his heart hadn't exploded. Um, Martin had leukemia and died of uh, a brain hemorrhage oh. in 1964. Um, and Ryan also said that his dad raised corn and he died when he was still a child, which wasn't true. Um, but it then goes on to say, still, the case presented strong evidence for reincarnation, mm. Tucker wrote in his 2013 book, Return to Life, in which he documented this story. But it was certainly not definitive. Here's He's, the thing. Say, it could be multiple past lives getting jumbled up. Nah, here's the thing, right? That if, seems most likely to me. That's it. Yeah. If the kid Thinking gets, like a scientist. <laughs> if the kid gets the mode of death wrong, it's not, it's not strong evidence. The kid's like, it, oh, I remember curly hair. I remember this and that. If they're getting major details, like, if it's like 50-50, mm. come on. Are you sure you're not like adding a little bit more into that than is there? Mm. If th that's that's my issue. If the best evidence for this is still so weak, it just feels a little bit like freaky that he remembers performing on Broadway, though. Sorry, not remembers. <laughs> freaky that he got <laughs> that correct about oh, yeah. performing on Broadway. That is very specific. Oh, it's it's incredibly unlikely. Like it's it's shocking that he managed to get so much right. But I guess we need to know how many kids are going through this process who get everything entirely wrong. Well, if he's, yeah. Because obviously you're going to get some kids who happen to get things right. Well, if he's got 2,200 yeah. cases on in his database <laughs> and yeah. like the best one, one of the best ones has 50% of the stuff wrong. <laughs> got a really obscure thing. Wrong like, evidence right for reincarnation. <laughs> All right. And uh, look, Jim Tucker is doing, like, I don't want, the work that he does is important, right? To some degree. I, I would definitely say. No, 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 genuinely. I, I genuinely think the work that he does is important. I just think that the people that do this work should... I, I, and I think other people agree as well that they should maybe be a little more critical yeah. of mm. the conclusions that they're coming to. They're start, it feels like they're very much starting off with the assumption, under the assumption that reincarnation is real mm -hmm. and then looking for evidence that supports that yeah. rather than looking at, the, looking, at the, that, looking at it and trying to disprove it, right? The thing is that's weird about this as well is that 
it's not none of this is trying to prove whether reincarnation is true or not. What it is specifically trying to prove is whether there is reincarnation with memory um, retained during different lives. Yeah. That's a very specific thing, and not at all like because the thing is they could be completely wrong about everything they're trying to do, and reincarnation could still be a thing, regardless of memory retention. Like, we have spoken about this so many times mm -hmm. that this is why I hate conspiracy theories. And this kind of delves into conspiracy, like all sort of pseudoscience, that whole sort of similar idea. This is why I hate conspiracy theories because they could be right. And, yeah, they and could be. Like, you know, like I always say, like, I always say this, like you are like, I don't care if you're right or wrong. The way that you've gotten to your conclusion is not sound. I will not believe it until there is evidence. And mm -hmm. even when, if evidence comes out and you're like, oh, I told you so. No, you didn't. I could say, I could say the moon is made of, um, cheese in the very center. There's this, the center of the moon is made of cheese, right? <laughs> Just a little bit in the middle. Because because President Obama uh, put it there um, to distract people from the migrants. I don't know. I can make something up, right? Yeah. And is that true? Stop it. <laughs> and, I heard it is, you know. And yeah, one day, at I'm some sorry. and one day at some <laughs> point, right? The you could find that the center of the moon is made of cheese, and I'd be like, haha, you see, I was right, and you could be like, well, no, shut. No, you weren't. <laughs> you were. You were crazy. That is crazy. You just managed to get one, like one thing right. Yeah. You know, what, if that's you know? true, actually, that suggests that the moon is actually a big protection disc for the cheese in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, some really important cheese, and it's so important. It's got an yeah. entire moon yeah. protecting it. Well, biggest baby moon. bell. Wow. Yeah. Well, so it's, it's a, world's it's a, worst it's a daddy baby. bell. Yeah. World's, <laughs> world's biggest baby bell with even bigger like skin. Yeah, oh, that's the worst part of the baby yeah. bell. Exactly. Tastes horrible. It's actually um, just one baby bell in the center. <laughs> <of> the <laughs> the Aha. Well worth it, Jeb. Always got to do anything to get that baby bell. Yeah. Is that the ad? Pay us. Um, <laughs> Spawn. We're all vegan. <laughs> Don't care. Don't be pushing baby, oh, vegan baby, baby bells. Bell. Might be a hey, thing. People watching aren't necessarily vegan. They'll have baby bells, won't they? Yeah. Okay. Don't say that. Baby Bell will hear you, Luke. Okay. Just keep on the DL. Okay. We've got to get some money. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Bell, pay us and we'll donate it to an animal charity. <laughs> or you can join our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash sci guys, and we won't have to sell out our beliefs to Baby Bell. Can we make a new Baby Bell tier on Patreon? No. Okay. Mm. Ooh, the Baby Bells. No. Why? why? Okay. We'll, we'll think do. about it. We'll think about Something it. Something to do. <laughs> 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 okay. So. Yeah, like, this is the thing. Like, it, it, people that believe in conspiracy theories, things like this, if they do turn out to be right, it is entirely for the wrong reasons. And so, w what is the point of being right if you just take a random guess, you know? Yeah. And just so happen to be correct. It's much better to be correct through evidence and proving it. Because for the person to end up being correct, to be proven right, Someone needs to prove it, and that person is the one that's done the work. The other person mm -hmm. just said something, believed it in face of you know, in, in spite of all evidence against it until they ended up being right. It's it's not quite the same thing. So there's also a case um, mm, that I'm going to ignore and skip over for now. Just fun. Just, basically, there was this uh, woman that, um, the woman that claimed to have a past life as an Irish person in the 19th century. Oh. Um, and she even published a book um, and she started using an Irish accent. Um, <laughs> and Transracial. No. <laughs> She's literally transracial. Trans accent. So well, it's either transracial or transnational, transnational so, or uh, yeah. reincarnation is real. Pick your battles, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she was hip she was hypnotized, and then she remembered the sort of Irish history, and then she became she started using an Irish accent. All this stuff. She was like, "Oh, I used to be Irish in the 19th century, but then I died." Blah blah blah. And she wrote a book and everything. And then journalists started to investigate it, and it all turned out to be false. The the name that she made up was was like no one existed. The the husband that apparently she had didn't exist. None of these people existed. She got general details about Ireland, right? Despite having never been there. Turns out she had an Irish nanny as a kid. Um, oh, of course. Uh, that's where she got the Irish accent from and the general details about Ireland. Most people don't think that she just made it up. Um, most people think that it was an induced false memory wow. from the hypnosis mm. that she just believed was true to the point where she was like, oh my God, this is actually true. But ultimately she just didn't remember that it happened. When it, it came from the fact that she had an yeah. Irish nanny as a kid. Um, so that's one thing to bear in mind. So coming back to this 2021 review. So here's just the con just just back to the conclusion of it, right? What is interesting is stuff that we've been talking about already. Um, so I'm just going to go to the conclusion of that 2021 review that I spoke about because it's pretty good. Um, so mm -hmm. basically it says that um, future, in future, when we're doing studies on this, we should be looking all around the world because it's something that it's been sort of 
sort of documented around the world. Um, and this is the thing. It says following a metal, uh, you, need, you need to follow a methodological standard and try to overcome possible limitations such as linguistic barriers during interviews and the limited investigations regarding adults who claim to or um, claim to have had past life memories. Uh, so essentially what that means is that there's no standard for how we do these studies. We just kind of do them ad hoc, uh, which is which makes them difficult to compare, which makes it difficult to put all the data together. So there needs to be some kind of standard for how these studies are conducted. <laughs> also goes on to say that the falsifiability of claimed past lives memories must always be considered and future studies should always consider a socio-psychological hypothesis for past lives memories. In other words, researchers have to consider possible associations between these alleged memories and cultural variables such as religious or spiritual aspects, general beliefs, children's imagination slash fantasy, and probably different levels of socio-political allowance for sharing or even publishing information on observed cases. So essentially, what is go what they're saying here is... Um, that they need to be, they need to scrutinize more the reasons behind these potential memories that, that you know, could be related to sort of religion or, um, or sort of like, look at it more on a case by case basis of what's mm -hmm. going on in that country, right? Because there could be many other, many factors that are affecting that. Interesting that they mentioned child, uh, children's imagination in play, because that, that to me seems to be the most obvious sort of, is this not just kids playing and people yeah. that aren't kids taking them at their word and, yeah taking them seriously when they're just playing. Um, so I also wanted to talk about past life regression therapy, which is uh, pseudoscience. Don't ever do it. It is bunk. Um, it can oh. help you, but in the same way that a placebo could help you, it is, there is no method methodological data that supports this. So past life regression therapy um, is a, is essentially a sort of kind of hypnotherapy that, um, it's supposed to take you into past lives to resolve current trauma. The idea is that mental illnesses and whatnot can be caused by um, unresolved trauma from a past life. And so by delving into that past life and confronting the trauma head on, you can deal with it. Um, so the uh, the hypnotherapy practice Edinburgh, because hypnotherapy is a thing, hypnotherapy practice Edinburgh has a little page that says why it's a waste of money. Um, basically, again, it, it just says that there's no evidence to support it. Um, if you're talking about therapy, you wanna take an evidence-based approach. There is no evidence to say how it works mm -hmm. or that it works consistently. Basically, if you believe that it's going to work, it can work. But there's also the 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 worry that it can induce and implant a false memory, which can cause further distress. Uh, which is why, Luke, when I said it back at the start, that they don't use induced ones because it's false memory. They, they can just implant a false memory in your brain. You can just induce a false memory by hypnotizing someone. And mm. again, when you said, oh, well, what if they, if both the sort of, um, person that had the memory and the person that was sort of inducing the memory uh couldn't know that information that was that was that was sort of said the reason that's not included is because you can come up with any sort of vague information and be somewhat right about it you know oh of course but i mean you in order to like as you say the burden of proof is on the person making the claim you would only consider it proven if the if the information was specific enough beyond reasonable <coughs> doubt <clears throat> yeah. that it's not yeah it would have to be like I remember the number plate of my car. I remember which house well, number I lived at and which address in which country and what the name of my husband was yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. Name, number plate, house. Yeah, all of that sort of stuff. Because the thing is that people will be like, oh my, like I remember my car plate, my, my Reggie plate on my car was this. And then you find someone that has that. Mm. And you're like, oh, they died. <laughs> <laughs> Man, people don't usually do that. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there are like seven billion people on this planet, and there's one die in every like I don't know what ten seconds or something. I don't know how often people yeah. die. But I feel like you could you could do some statistical analysis on how likely it would be. There mm. is there is a, a letter for this in in science. I think about like for proof, um, how likely it is mm. that that a that a piece of evidence proves the hypothesis greater than random. I can't remember it, P or T or something. Like that. Um, and uh, like you, even if people are remembering fragments of information, like I remember my number plate had these letters in it, um, you know, and obviously, you know, 7 billion people in the world, someone's going to have that number plate. But then if you can, you can take into account, you know, if they have this, these letters in the number plate and they correctly got this number of house and in a street with yeah. this name and with a partner with this name and this many children. And like, it starts becoming more statistically unlikely that it's made up. Here's the thing though. No one is keeping this down. There's not sort of, you know, um, what? I mean, I guess, 
What's the opposite of reincarnation? Big death. There's no big death out there saying, Ooh. trying to keep reincarnation down, you know? There's, n there's not really a group out there, as far as we're aware, that are trying to stop people from believing in reincarnation. Yeah. So it's not like any stories of someone who remembers in exquisite detail um, a past life is being suppressed. Yeah. The best stories yeah. are the ones that we have heard of, right? The, be the best recorded stories we have heard of. And the best recorded stories are not that great. L l let's be the best fifty percent success rate. Right? right. Yeah. No. The best. <laughs> the best recorded stories that we've heard of are n not very specific, and you can always find a, a little sort of um, a little sort of way to niggle in there and be like, "Oh, that's not. That's probably not true." Mm. Right. I I agree with you that there is not some you know big death conspiracy um, that is trying to uh, you know silence any evidence of reincarnation, but I do think that. The current era we're living through, which is a materialist era, not mm. only in our science, but also in our economic system, um, does encourage the encourage by, by rewarding um, and by sort of deriding any suggestion to the opposite that the things that are worth having in life are material things. That is the whole basis of our economic system. And the base of our economic system is the basis of our entire world. So anything that suggests that um, there is something more to life than the gathering and experiencing of sensory um, perceptions based on material goods and ingesting things, um, is at least not encouraged. So I don't disagree with you, but my point is less that, the, you know, there there is, that is going to be suppressed entirely by society, and more that if there was a case that was very compelling, that it would sort of rise to the top. Because, because these sort of things that challenge... It, it, our society does ridicule yeah. the sort of belief in the immaterial or the belief that um, immaterial is more important than material. It does ridicule that. But to the same effect, that means that when something seeks to sort of challenge that belief, it is often spread about fairly well. I mean, we hear all the time of sort of miracles that, that sort of mm. go against science. And science can't explain this. Science can't explain that. Science says we can't move faster than light, but maybe we can. So, the time travel this, time travel these stories we latch on to, right? That my point is that there's not a conspiracy to keep that down. Yeah, societally, like it is suppressed, but that it's it's suppressed to a level where if there's not really evidence for it, then it doesn't rise to the top. If there is evidence for it, then it's gonna shoot right to the top and everyone's gonna know about it, right? I agree with you um, on that. But as we've said before, um, proof or disproof of the concept of past life regression, mm. memories from past lives, is nothing to do with, essentially, proof of reincarnation and yeah. spirituality. The other thing I would say is that the very notion that um, you require proof for something, proof that you can show mm. to another person, is, I would argue, a fundamentally flawed concept because you, I could ne you could never prove to me, for example, that you're conscious. You could never prove to me that the obje objective world exists when I'm not observing it. Yeah. There are loads of things that just are untouchable by that theory. And those things that are fundamentally not provable in with physical material equipment might be the most real things in the world. And science would never be able to figure that out. Yeah, that's fine. My So again, I'm not trying to say that you need to prove that reincarnation is real or not. I'm like, I have no real stance on reincarnation. I don't think, oh, it's absolutely not true. I'm just like, I don't really know because I don't know. And I can't really know mm. what is, what, what strikes me as odd is the sort of standing up and saying reincarnation, um, sort of he, here is the, here's the evidence to show that people remember these things from past lives. You're using science in a way that science can't really be under the sort of, under the way that science should be used, you're not using it correctly. You're using a tool for the wrong purpose, right? You're like trying to cut a steak with a spoon. Yeah. And I'm saying, look, you shouldn't be using a spoon for that. You're saying, what, you're saying I can't cut the steak? No, cut the steak, just use a knife, right? Like, yeah. If you, you, you can absolutely believe in reincarnation. You can absolutely think that, um, that, that these memories are past lives. But when you try and shove that into a scientific framework and you have to then disregard parts of how we how we sort of go about um proving things empirically that's what i take issue with the misuse of sort of i guess 
the, sci the scientific method. Yeah, the trouble is, is that we're not taught. We're <coughs> we're taught, especially in the UK, at least, we're not taught, for example, at any point, um, that there are things that are fundamentally not provable. We're mm. taught scientific supremacy to a certain extent. At least science teaches us scientific supremacy because it is so incredibly effective. Yeah, and there's no. Yeah, there's no educational system that go that we're taught RE, we're taught religious education that goes, this is what a bunch of people believe, this is what these people believe, and this is how it differs, and this is the wars they've had. But we're not taught philosophy, really. Yeah, exactly. We're not taught philosophy, we're not taught metaphysics, and we're not taught that those subjects even really exist or are worth um, pursuing unless you, through your own volition, happen to pursue them. Mm. Um, and, that, and, and, and that is because, I, I believe to a certain extent, that because we live in a sort of industrial complex as a society, i.e. countries are at war with each other, effectively, even in peacetime, because they're developing technology that they can sell to each other and get each other's money and advance beyond each other. That is a form of industrial war. Um, the only things that matter to countries, and by, by extension, the education systems that countries provide, are things that forward the physical... Um, material, uh, um, uh, what's the what's the word? The physical m material um, pr prospects of that country, um, and we don't have, for example, and this is something that there's a organization working on that my dad knows really well um, that, called the Good Country Project, which is trying to change the. Um, measure of how a country is doing based yes. on the happiness of the citizens, mm -hmm. and if you were doing that materialism would probably begin to crumble because any kind of, like your, the basis of your society might become therapy as opposed to mm. amassing material goods. Drugs. 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 Yeah. Well, drugs, no. <laughs> I mean, yes, sure. Okay, you would pump, right. yeah, so you what, would pump what your... Would make, yeah. what, would make an, what would make an opium addict the happiest, like happier than anything? Okay, so opium is very easy to get addicted to, but what would make an opium addict happier than anything? Well, free and all and constant access to opium. Yeah, but as soon as the opium supply didn't come, it would make them very unhappy. And so you start a war, right? And then <laughs> you take the opium. Yes. You see? Yeah. And this is the thing: opium addicts would make perfect soldiers because they just want that opium. Didn't we do this to the Chinese? I think we exported a bunch of opium to mess with the Chinese. Yeah, probably. The UK did. Yeah. That's, that's not very nice. That's 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 us. Good old good old Great Britain. Love just messing <laughs> with countries and seeing what happens. Anyway, Corey, past lives. I apologize for my, uh, <laughs> my little lecture there. No, no, I, I, I liked it. No, this is the thing. I, again, I just want to say that I'm not trying to say that I don't believe in reincarnation. I actually think it's a very nice and interesting idea. I just don't really care much about the idea of reincarnation because I can't prove it or disprove it. I can't experience it. You know what I mean? I, in, until I'm at the point at the end of my life, really, or unless I'm going to meditate and stuff and like... I don't, I don't, oh I don't, man! I've got no, no. To do. Remember that old saying? <laughs> oh no, no, no! Let me. I'm, what I'm saying is, I don't have time to get enlightened. You know? Remember that old saying? You one must meditate for twenty minutes a day. If you don't have twenty minutes a day, you must meditate for an hour a day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like when I say I don't have time, I don't want to meditate. I don't want to. I don't want to reach enlightenment. That seems like it seems boring. You still right? on your outward face. I'm just saying that being the Buddha seems like, you know, or being a Buddha rather, just doesn't seem like, you know, seems pretty, yeah. Oh, sounds like a brain talking. Yeah, that's fine. Sounds like an ego talking. That's fine. <laughs> I'm good with that, you know? No, I just mean like, look, ultimately, if I'm going to get reincarnated anyway, there's not much point wasting my life trying to figure out the ins and outs of reincarnation. I should just enjoy what I'm doing now. You can do it in the next and then life. Do it again. Yeah, yeah I'll put it off. Yeah, yeah it, it, reincarnation it allows for eternal procrastination, which is really <laughs> all that I want, right? <laughs> I wish we had like a monk on the program to talk to you about this. <laughs> I can't do this for you. <laughs> like I'm, I'm fully kidding. <laughs> I know, I know. So yeah, um, Jamp, you mentioned imaginary friends, didn't you? I did. Yeah. So I did read a study. Um, I read multiple studies, but I read one study about imaginary friends um, and past lives. It was actually imaginary playmates. And uh, past, oh, what's the word? Ghosts. No. <laughs> uh, past, I think it was individuals or past, oh. um, ide past identities, imaginary playmates and past identities. And I know that the researcher was trying to have fun there because that's uh, IP and PI. 
Hippie. Yeah, no, as in <laughs> so, <laughs> they shortened it entirely. Hey, that is fun. You're right. They That's shortened really no, fun. but they shortened it throughout the entire paper. So they're talking about IPs, imaginary playmates, and PIs, uh, past identities, and it's very confusing <laughs> to to skim read it because Ips. it's so difficult to tell those two apart. Ips and pies. Uh, Ips and pies. Ips and pies. pies. So, um, essentially, they sort of concluded. Um, they, they they looked at they looked at they looked around the world and sort of saw. Okay, right. So in the U.S., there are sort of sixty six percent of uh, kids. Um, have imaginary friends if you're using the broadest range. Whereas, like um, in India, uh, a, a lot of your kids have sort of uh, memories of past lives. They were trying to see if uh, cross that there was a sort of cross cultural comparison there between past lives mm. and uh, memories of past lives and imaginary friends. And it seems that there is. So it happens at roughly the same times, roughly the same time of onset. And one of the explanations that they've got for this is kind of that when they don't spend time alone, when when kids spend time alone, um, they start to come up with sort of play by themselves and that's where imaginary friends come from and also it's kind of at the time where kids are discerning what is real from what is reality from what isn't reality and they mm. do that through conversation with adults and so they find out that things are and aren't real and so they, they basically start to fit their the framework their framework in the world of the world um into the framework of reality that they discern from converse through conversation you know if someone's playing like if like think an example here is like if a kid is playing and they're like i'm going to the moon um an adult might be like oh you're going in a rocket ship and the kid knows, okay, you need a rocket ship to get to the moon. Yeah. Right? Ah, that's very interesting. Yeah, it's, it is interesting. It, like, childhood development is really cool. Um, but also they point out that there's sort of cultural differences that lead to sort of changes here. So in India, there's very few cases reported of kids having imaginary friends. One reason for that could be that kids in India just aren't alone as much as kids in mm. North America. Uh, but also the fact that apparently when um, a kid is talking to someone in that sense, um, it's it it's more likely to be seen as an invisible person or an invisible entity rather than an imaginary friend, right? So the concept of imaginary friend doesn't exist as strongly as it in India as it does in like a America. Yeah, like some sort of yes, like some sort of spiritual entity that ex that is existent that exists but is not visible. Right. The kid is mm. interacting with in the same I guess in the same way that people think their kids are talking to ghosts or seeing ghosts when they're like oh I see someone yeah, in the room yeah. that kind of thing. That is apparently more common in India than it is in the US. So that was just those are just the studies that made. The right. link is in the description for this study. It's quite interesting. Ghosts um, if you want to give it a read. Like India. Got it. There's more people there. Yeah. More ghosts. More, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um there are some more issues with the um sort of even the best evidence for past lives. Um and it's basically this person talking about the issues with Stevenson's work. So quote here. Even if he claimed not to have definitive data supporting the reincarnation hypothesis, Stevenson seemed to have a preconceived idea, and he just sought the way to confirm it. He may have been guilty of confirmation bias. Essentially, um, this is a this is a paper about the un, like how unethical. Uh, do you remember we were talking about um, past life regression therapy? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a paper about how unethical that is. Very unethical because um, it can harm people, and also it's not based on evidence. Awful. Maybe we'll do an entire episode on that because it really annoyed me when I found mm. out about it. Um, but yeah, so this is just talk. It talks about the issues with Stevenson's research. Um, uh, one here it says the main problem with Stevenson's research then is that his hypotheses are not falsifiable. Essentially, you can't disprove them, and that's the issue with pseudoscience, right? You can't disprove it definitively. The, it, whatever you do, you can move the goalposts and be like, oh well, there's this and that. Like in the same way that Luke, you're saying there's stuff that can't be proven by science. If you like well, reincarnation, stuff that science assumes that can't be proven. Well, yeah. What I'm saying, reincarnation could, can't be proven by science if it's um, if it is sort of immaterial. An imma it's a sort of an immaterial concept, right? If it if it is out right, so if it you can't. Basically, the point here is that if you create an idea of a thing that is immaterial, that is non-measurable, yeah. and you say this thing exists. Um, and you know it exists everywhere, um, and it and it happens, but you can't prove it because science can't measure it in any way because it is completely out with the bounds of science. That is kind of that's kind of what's going on here, right? It's the same way as you can't disprove that God exists because if you say, "Oh, God is everywhere," okay, well, why can't we measure God? Because God is all powerful, but then why hasn't God shown us? Because God is above us. What? Just can we? So many rules. Right. Fine. <laughs> okay, you can't prove you can't prove God is real, but you can't disprove God is real because you'll just make up. It's like like playing a game with a kid where you're like, "Oh, I win." They're like, "Nope, I made a new rule." Is you're you can't win because you broke the rule. Yeah, it's so infuriating. It's just my cousin does that all the time with table football. I just want to like shut up, right? 
And that's what Sorry, it's like Abby. talking to a Christian. You're watching this in your future. <laughs> <laughs> you are a terrible at the table you football, the though, and you don't want to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, the point there is, right, obviously, if you're trying to prove something that is not necessarily provable by science, um, basically, if you assume something is true, but that assumption can't be proven by science, you're basically kind of, you, you can't really use it in a science in the scientific, is, using the scientific method. That is what science does. So how is that different? So another another point here is that um, I, this is a key point that I had to leave out. Stevenson's uh, the, Stevenson's ideas, the things that Stevenson comes up with, they're you can't use them to predict anything, right? Yeah. They're not um, they're they're not reliable, right? So um, you can't there's there's not enough consistency there to predict. Okay, if someone has birthmarks, then then X. It's just in some cases this, in some cases that. We're not really right. sure X Y Z. There's there's no reli- there's no no reliability within the results. There's no way to use that to predict what's going to happen in the future. Okay. It's just a bunch of stuff that happens maybe and I've come up with this idea that links it all but it doesn't link it all in any way that is predictable whatsoever. It's just I think they're linked. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Cool. So that's that's, that's why the it's difference, di- Yeah, that's the difference yeah. between that because w- w- science makes assumptions, right? Yeah. Like for example, I can make the assumption that um I'm going to mess something up. I can make the assumption that oh, no. if I Flick this switch, the light oh. is going to go off, right? That's not an assumption. Well, I, I, no, the site, right? Okay, so there's, I, I, I understand. Oh, oh goodbye, light. Uh, my point is that I understand that if I flick that switch, the light will go off, right? And the reason yeah. that I think that is because there's electricity coming from the mains running up through the light, and if I flip that, flip that switch, it stops the, the electric current from passing through the circuit, yeah. lighting up the LEDs, right? Yeah. I understand the science of that. Now, these are all based on assumptions. Right. Yeah. But those assumptions allow for me to turn that light on and use it use it in a predict- predictable manner. If when you flicked the switch, the light didn't turn off, you would have to conclude your assumptions were incorrect. Uh well. Or your assumptions may be incorrect. Yes. Yeah. Maybe incorrect, and then I'd have to try and find. Okay. Well, why? Turns out. Oh, it's not plugged in. Well, my assumption is then no longer you know yeah. incorrect. But then if I get to a point, yeah, you're, you're right. If I get to a point where okay, me flicking the switch, I've tried every avenue, me flicking the switch seems to have no correlation to the light, has no cause effect um, sort of relationship with the light. It's just been coincidence all this time. I'd have to come up with a new model, right? Yeah. But thus far in human history, when you flick a light switch, usually the light will turn on. It's yeah. fairly predictable. So that's that's why science is useful. Yeah. 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 Oh, abs- I'm, I'm on a science podcast. I don't doubt science is useful. <laughs> <laughs> I just like playing with it. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I agree. I agree. So yeah, I don't have an issue with reincarnation. I'm not poking fun at that. I think it's interesting and I you can't really prove it wrong. I more take issue with, and I'm having a bit of a laugh about the fact that you're taking this sort of thing that isn't necessarily provable by science and sort of cramming it into the scientific method and ignoring some things and focusing only on other things to make it seem like it is valid. When it's not really a valid use of the scientific method because mm. you're not trying to like, you know, when whenever they flick their light switch and the light doesn't turn on, they just say, oh, this is one of those cases where it doesn't do that. But I'm still right. Maybe. No, you're not. If the light switch does not <laughs> turn on, then you got to come up with another idea. Do you that. not think there would be any way of designing? So if, if I gave you 200 grand... And I said, right, Corey, I'd like you to, maybe a movie more than 200 grand, you've got a lot of flights to catch. Yeah. I'd like you to go around the world and I would like you to interview people who claim to have past lives and I want you to gather as much data. Do you think there would be a way of gathering specific enough data with enough time and resources to form a, at least an opinion one way or the other? No. Right. No. That's disappointing. Well, Put it this way, there are a lot of people. A lot of people have died. There are a lot of lives. And unless we go by the... the me- unless we take the idea that you need to be entirely specific and entirely correct, then there's no way to prove it, right? So if we, if we say, okay, for this to be believable, you need to be specific and correct, right? There needs to be specificity and you can't be incorrect about any of the details that you give. So, okay, I, I interview a bunch of people, right? Like a hundred, uh, I think a... Uh, a thousand people, right? Yeah. Ten thousand people, and I, I, what I would need to to have that sort of proven one way or the other is a significant number of those to have completely uninfluenced, which again would wipe out like a ton of that <laughs> ten thousand, right? Like 
children that have not been influenced by their parents talking about um, past lives of people that they don't know. And even then, if we wipe out half that 10,000, let's say 5,000 of those people um, are kids who are talking about past lives, who haven't been influenced by parents, all this and that, and they're talking about details. If they're not specific, then that's 5,000 people. All I need to do is find 5,000 people that mm. died in a, that had a similar job, that died in a similar way right. to what this kid said. So it needs to be more specific than that. But then you start getting to the point of, well, no kid is going to be talking that specifically about this, right? They're, they're not. It just, it, it is, it is frustrating because it is not, it, it is not falsifiable. You can't prove it to be untrue because you can always come up with another reason for it. But proving that it is true would be conceptually fairly simple. Yeah. If, you know, provided the assumption that like, you know, you can remember things fully and you can be specific and correct about those things. But if that's not where it is, if say past life memories are a real thing, but actually they're just hazy, then there's no real way to prove it really. Mm. Unless we do come like studies in the brain, but actually we have done studies in the brain. I forgot to mention this. We've done studies in the brain and apparently um, it is similar uh, people. Oh yeah. People who are um, people who are more susceptible to um, misremembering things essentially, or, having issues with it's called um what's it called yeah people who have got issues with sort of um source errors basically remembering where information has come from um they are more likely to uh have memories of past lives so there's a test that you can do where you show people a bunch of names um and then you show them a list of um a little while later that you show them a list of names that they have seen that they were shown before mixed in with famous names, mixed in with names that they've not seen. And you've got to mm -hmm. tell, and they've got to basically discern which of these names are um, famous names. Oh, From yeah, famous list. names. You can, oh, right. You've got to discern which of these names are famous names. And they, like, they can fully get it wrong, sort of thing, right? Yeah. They can be like, oh, yeah, like this is a famous person, but actually it was just one of the names they were shown before. Because they remember huh. that they remember it, but they can't remember where it came from. Yeah. Right? In the same <laughs> sense that someone that thinks they've got a past life, I remember hearing about a pilot on TV in the World War II Oh, that was me. I can't remember where that came. It was me, right? Um, there's also there's also um, you know some studies on the brain where it's like um, parts of if if something feels like it's coming from outside of yourself, if it comes from a part of your brain where it feels like it's coming from outside of the self, it will then be a trip, or it feels sort of like more distant from the memories of the self, the sort of sense of self. Mm. Then it will be attributed to it can be attributed to a past life in some people. Like some people are like, oh, that doesn't feel like a memory that I had, a past life. Or a piece of information that feels separate from the self. That sounds similar to the sort of deja vu hypothesis. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so that's the thing. It's the same thing as being like, oh, deja vu. Uh, it's really because uh, you made a mistake and time skipped back. I mean, you can't prove that I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, man. You can't. That's it. But I didn't uh, know we knew what that was about. That's really interesting. And, to know. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gotta stop doing that, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what I mean, right? Like, if I I could say that deja vu is time travel. I could say, yeah. I could say any of these things. And you can't prove it wrong, but you also can't really prove that it's true. And so it exists in this limbo of people being like, continuing to study it and continuing to do these studies that are honestly just almost begging the question, assuming that it is true. And that's the way that the studies are built. Yeah. Right, with these, under the assumption that it's true. And it, it's just frustrating. So instead of focusing on things that, or focusing on studying these things in a way that would be useful or focusing on things that are more useful, we continue to do these studies where, where we can't prove anything one way or the other. It's essentially just building up a data, building up a database of interviews with people that say they remember past lives. When like ultimately, we could look into this and be like, oh, it's probably just kids um, going through play, and this is how kids do it, and it's misattributed by parents. There's all these explanations that make mm. complete sense, but instead of like trying to find a way to sort of prove, um, or uh, trying to trying to find a way to sort of prove reincarnation in a sort of far better, more material way, we're doing it this way that really doesn't seem to hold any water already. There's no way that you can pull these sort of past life memories back from the brink that they're on of this is just human development, right? It would, it would take a lot of work to do that. Yeah. And it, it, I would say nigh impossible to prove at this point that all of these cases thus far of past life memories are actually past life memory, memories of past lives and not just the, way, the ways that kids develop normally. Mm. You know, in the same way that saying like, okay, imaginary friends for kids, yeah, they're actual just, they're just people. They're just people that are on a different dimension. It, it, it'd be the same thing as studying that, you know? It, it, in could my be. mind. And it's just, it's could frustrating be. because it seems like we could we could do this in a better way. Yeah. Yeah. We could do it in a better way, but you also think fundamentally not possible either. <laughs> <laughs> we could study it, but we still would never be able to prove it. 
I think we, yeah, I, I, we might, I, in my, I don't think we can prove it just yeah. this way, but I think that we could, it, it, it is interesting to look at, at least. It's a real shame because I've, um, this is not an episode about reincarnation, it's an episode about past lives, mm. um, but it's very interesting seeing the um, frustrations you have with the data collected on past lives and the arguments you make as to why they're rubbish. Um, th those, interestingly, from what I've, seen and read from people for example in in sort of buddhist teachings they would actually in terms of your speaking on like how you come up with concept of self and the way your mind is like that's slightly less me because it comes from an area of the brain that's more attributed to the outside mm. or whatever um that would actually i think be a really interesting discussion um when talking about the concept of reincarnation as mm. opposed to past lives because past lives as far as we understand it um, memory is stored in the brain. Mm -hmm. um, although there may be there may be Buddhist people who disagree with you, but um, memory, as far as we understand it, is stored in the brain. Um, and then, uh, so then, obvious, and and then, so in terms of reincarnation, the materialist view goes: Well, when you're dead, you're dead. We can see your body is dead. We can burn it. We can put it in the ground, and it rots mm. away. Um, and that sort of ignores certain other things, and is based on some very serious, di unprovable. Um, assumptions that are heavily flawed. Um, so it's it's very interesting. I think that the reincarnation aspect to it would actually probably not be too. It, it is unprovable, mm -hmm. absolutely. But you can you can logic it out in a in an, in a way that is not it's not flawed. Um, it's not provable, but it's there aren't yeah, any glaring flaws in it. Yeah, and, and another you mentioned something that's really interesting here because you say that. Um, sort of memory stored in the brain, the sort of, the sort of physical aspect yeah. there. This is what's interesting to me about the the sort of um, birthmarks being scars from past lives, is that if how would how if if the re, if the sort of reincarnation, the past lives are not, are spiritual, right? It's the soul. Yeah. How does that then affect the birthmark on the body, the physical, right? There would be some like there's someone there's would some, give okay, you an, yes, a reason. There's some, your essence is yeah. Sure, yeah, there's some your essence can uh, per, like uh, permutate throughout your body. Whatever, shut up. Um no. Um <laughs> sorry, but like you again, it's a kid making up the rules of a game. Yeah. Like if you have to it's this is why Occam's razor bothers me, the way that people understand it, because you're then to to for me when I say, Well then why would you have um why would the birthmarks be scars if it's if it's reincarnation, if it's like the, the bodies are completely separate, you then need to come up with a way that the, these bodies are connected or whatever. And then you could say, oh, well, souls can me have memories of their life. And you're making an assumption there that the souls exist, that this is how it happens. Like, it's so frustrating. Like, ugh, like, it's fun to do this, right? And it's fun to do this, I think, with lore and with like fiction. But when it comes to reality, you, making this up in a way that is not provable is. I think ultimately pointless. It can be fun, but it's pointless. I, I see it as not as valuable or valid as philosophy, which seeks to understand things that are not necessarily provable. Philosophy is a way of proving things using logic outside of science. Yeah. Right. And obviously, it can science can come into philosophy, all, all of that. But there are so many like sort of philosophical ideas that um, prove things without using the scientific method at all. Right. Yeah. And that is valuable. I think that's interesting. Th these these things exist entirely outside of that, which is what frustrates me to no end. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to finish this off, I do want to talk about something. So maths, right? Yes. So uh, past lives, reincarnation, right? There are lots of people on the planet, 7 billion, and there were fewer people on the planet before, right? Maths. Yes. Yeah. So if there's a bigger number now and a fewer number before, where did all the bloody souls come from? Where did yeah, all the people come from? This bugs me no end because I don't understand <laughs> if consciousness is like, how, how does it work? Does it, does it subdivide? <clears throat> Are we all the same person? What's going on, man? So confusing. Well, <laughs> this makes me think of, and here's an answer for you. This makes me think of the egg. And we could think of it the way that we think we've thought of electrons. Uh, electrons are thought of at some point, right? There's the idea that there's sort of like only one electron, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. You know, um, and it exists at, and each individual electron that we think is an individual electron is just the same electron existing at different points and places of time, right? Like in the fabric of reality, the electron is just popping into existence because it exists outside of time, right? 
you could say the same for consciousness, right? If you heard, you've heard the story of the egg, I've sent it to both of you. In fact, it's linked in the description. There's a Kurtz Gesagt video that is the story of the egg. It's really interesting. Someone basically wakes up after dying in a car crash and they see this sort of um, hazy sort of godlike figure and they, they talk for a while um, and it essentially comes to the point of the person understanding that, um, I won't spoil the ending for you entirely, but the person comes to understanding that they are every single person that's ever existed. They are in a point between lives right now, but they're going to go back into another life. They are every single person and they have been every single person, they will be every single person, and it's for some idea. It, it gets to a point at the end, but every si all of humanity, every single life, is one single consciousness. And I find that interesting, and that would be an interesting way to describe, to sort of say, oh, this is how past lives or reincarnation works, that mm -hmm. everyone is just one. We are one consciousness experiencing everything in completely different ways. I find that incredibly interesting, and I really like that story. People that do past lives don't seem to not even think about something like this. Just the, the raw maths of, well, how does how do like how does like what like six billion people become seven billion people if there's only yeah. a set number of souls or consciousnesses or whatever, or or new ones just well they're not saying this one they they you know they it could be like you say one soul yeah. experiencing all the lives but it's the specific order it's experiencing them in sure yeah but then in a timeless world. It, they're experiencing them all at the same time, but when they're bound inside of time, they're experiencing them one by one, and that's the previous one. Why that has some kind of material, um, you know, uh, chain of, of of cause and effect that causes you to have scars, I have no idea. <laughs> but then also, <laughs> but then it's usually someone that's died recently. So what that would mean is there'd need to be a line of people, sometimes through families and sometimes yeah. not, that have that like one life leading to another to another to another yeah. and then looping back at some point and doing a whole line again could you yeah. know yeah well they got forever haven't yeah. they well they, they do have forever <laughs> but then again like that is it, you're then taking a scientific framework to try and prove this timeless outside of our own reality and understanding consciousness that can jump through time do we know of anyone who's had past life memories from the future and why wouldn't that happen yeah right yeah right yeah, man. Maybe kids that are making one way. maybe kids that are making stuff up about being I don't know like uh, d d monsters or spacemen are actually just from the yeah, future. True. Yeah. Oh, gosh. You heard it here first, guys. Corey's hypothesis. No, come on. Not, <laughs> new, but no. new working theory. It's Jamp's hypothesis. Really, though. No, it's Jamp's idea, and Jamp is right. Sorry. The oh, way that you can yeah. tell, I feel like the way that you can tell that a lot of these things um, are kind of made up by humans more than just sort of being. Um, being observed by humans is that often the limits of them are well within the limits of the human imagination mm -hmm. whereas when we study science often things stretch the bounds of our imagination yeah, yeah like electrons aren't really there when you're not looking at them stop that okay that's i will never <laughs> stop looking at okay deal like, with that now <laughs> like really quantum, like if you look at quantum mechanics right quantum physics if you're studying that that is stretching the bounds of human imagination which oh, is yeah. where i'm like okay this is probably not just made up by some guy, yeah. Because it is it is difficult for us to comprehend. Whereas yeah, yeah. the idea the idea of past lives it very much is ah sequentially you just follow through. It's what reincarnated. I was one person and now I'm this person. Because we experience time as a as a cause effect A to B. That's how past lives are. Because ah oh, you know it. Oh, it's just frustrating that it it feels like a very sort of um close-minded way of being open-minded mm -hmm. you know <laughs> yeah but that is the sides of past lives as yeah, i've managed yeah, yeah, yeah. to sort of find it Very what do you guys good. think any like, thoughts yeah well i can't wait for my next life <laughs> wow geez. there's nothing wrong with this one i just want to know what comes next what if all three of us next season the same the same soul <gasps> Yeah, and that's I why think, we make a podcast, I, I, podcast I, I think that's probably true but yeah. we're also everyone else so we're not making a podcast with everyone so that doesn't mm, make yeah. sense mm. just a reminder me I wonder. I hope that in the space between, that I am my, fa I am the consciousness's favorite. What? But you're so, the consciousness, Corey. Yeah, I know. But like of all the of all the, I hope that mine is the favorite one. When we're pulled out of this, yeah, this reality, and we're right. like part, and we remember all the yeah, lives. Because like, like if you're, oh yeah, Corey was my favorite. Yeah, yeah, if like you're you're Hitler and Obama and stuff, you'd be like, well, Hitler's my like Hitler's my least favorite way of being, like you know, a living being. But Corey was my favorite. Yeah, I really liked Corey. Right. Yeah, yeah, and it's well, not then. weird because it's me. <laughs> it's it's me. It's not weird because it's you, but you're currently you. But when you're not you, if you're still thinking like you, then that's weird. Well, I'm not thinking like me. I'm outside of me. I'm just like 
at me was my favorite me. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. it's like it's like cells in your body competing against each other. That was that called cancer. Shh. <laughs> I think it's time for the quick fire quiz. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Past, past life edition. Yay! So you know the rules of the quick fire quiz. I will ask one question between the two of you. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer after I've finished asking the question wins. You guys got it? Yeah. Yay. Jap, what's your buzzer? I don't know. Where I, I die. Jeez, that is <laughs> macabre. Yeah. Luke, what's your buzzer? I used to be an elephant. <laughs> Okay. We haven't even talked about animals. No, it's too, no, much. It's too much. So, Do my question for you to today, heaven. my question for you today is... Do dogs go to heaven? <clears throat> at the University of Virginia, what does D-P-S stand for? I used to be an elephant. Look. Department. D-P. Uh, D- Department of Paranormal Sciences. Paranormal Phenomena. Oh. Ah. No, Luke. I don't know. Well... Department of... Give it a go. Anything. Uh, uh, past. The Department of Past. No. Department no. of. Okay. Percy so let me make it a little bit easier. Yeah. Sure. It is the Division of oh. P Studies. The Division of Past Studies. No. Division no. of Power. Uh, oh. The Division. Oh, Flip, what's it called? Perceptual studies. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> well done, Look, You won with absolutely no hints whatsoever. Congratulations. Yay. What do I win? Nothing. Nothing. Oh. So we would like to thank. Well, at uh, least win another life. No. no. Everyone gets one of those. One. The uh, they're, they're a dime a dozen. Luke. And you're all me, so it's fine. <laughs> it's very self-centered. So someone has to be at the end. But so is altruism. Wait, I just realized someone has to be the last life. No. 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 Not forever. That just starts again. So, oh. yeah. we'd like to thank all of our patrons, but we would also like to very much thank Finn TZ for T- Finn TZ. For this whole entire this whole episode. episode. Yeah, this yeah. idea. And yeah. if you want to, as I said, if you want to give us a topic that we have to do, go to our Patreon and join our Boaty McBoat face tier because that's what you can do with that. But you can also get other stuff on our Patreon. You can, you know, vote for topics. You can submit topics. You can get bonus episodes and all that stuff. It's really cool. So go there. And before we go, we would like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producers Ashley Mola and Finn TZ. And also, thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment. You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash guys, or you can find a contact at pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and at guys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at pod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com SciGuysPod At gmail.com You can follow me at Knocker everywhere You can follow me at Jumpkin everywhere You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere uh, Goodbye Goodbye I think Cor is currently transitioning between lives I'm, I'm going I'm going I'm going I'm going See you in the next life Bye <laughs>